Welcome to Inside, today produced in partnership between Alaska Public Media and M. Oppenheim TV. Today we're chatting with Diane Kaplan, President and CEO of the Rasmussen Foundation, one of the largest family foundations in the Pacific Northwest. The foundation's mission is to be a catalyst to promote a better life for Alaskans, and Diane has generously agreed to share some of her experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Diane, for joining us today. My pleasure, Mark. One of the things that I find interesting is that when you go back into history, you have so many themes that, that still today are, uh, are resonant in the Foundation's work. You have the, um, the, the cross-cultural uh, involvement. You have the respect that, that comes from that. You have pursuing business in a hard scrabble environment and making it successful and then giving back. And, and all those themes are part of your culture today as a foundation. It, it comes from a family, it comes from an involvement with the community, and it comes from a, a very hard-nosed idea of, of how investment ought to resonate and, and be effective for the community itself. Well, the early values of the foundation are very much in play today. Of course, they are carried out in a different way. But for example, uh, if we for whatever reason only had $100 left, I'm sure it would go to a food bank or to a shelter. Um, helping people who need a hand up is definitely part of the culture of the foundation. At the same time, a lot of our work is strategic and when we operate and make a big investment, we operate very much like bankers. We'll look somebody in the eye, face to face, always, and we make a judgment. If we make a grant to this person, are they going to pay back? Now, in the case of a banking loan, it's pay back the money that you loan them with interest. In the case of Rasmussen Foundation is, will you pay back with social capital? For us, we very much believe in meeting small needs as they come across because Alaskan organizations have few places to go and a lot of those things are not very sexy. You know, fixing your roof or buying a new copy machine are not terrifically sexy to most funders. They're very sexy to us. So we do three million dollars worth of small grants every year. It's a couple of hundred. Almost no other foundation our size does any small grants. It's just too um, labor intensive and usually there are other funders within their region or in their discipline that do that kind of funding, but we don't have that here. A number of years ago, we learned that Alaska, among the 50 states, had the lowest level of charitable giving for people who are on the wealthy side of the scale. So people who are low income, people who are middle income, gave about average compared to people in the other states, but our wealthy Alaskans were not giving to charities the way their peers did in other states. We decided there was a role for us, as other fa private foundations have done around the country, to stimulate private giving, individual giving in our state by using the Rasmussen family as a model about what you could do. So that's taken uh, several different tacks. One is creating uh, an initiative, we call it the Community Asset Building Initiative, and through that, nine new community foundations have been established. We provided matching grants, technical support, and built up our statewide Alaska Community Foundation to be the back office for all of those. And we've had great assistance from way back when, when we first started studying this, from the Kellogg Foundation, the Mott Foundation, the Lilly Foundation, the Ford Foundation, who had all done similar efforts, whether in Indiana or Michigan or in Nebraska or London, and learned and said, how would you do this? If you were gonna start all over and do this, how would you do it? and we had a great group of people who advised us and it's gone really well and we're starting to see those first really big gifts to these community funds. At the same time, each of us gets a permanent fund dividend every year. This year is about $2,000 per Alaskan. We initiated a piece of legislation to allow Alaskans to donate all or part of their dividend to the charity of their choice. So the Pick, Click, Give campaign right now is underway we uh, invest in a pick, click, give manager with many of our funder partners here in Alaska. Uh, we do media, we do a lot of social media. I was just on the teleconference with our, my colleague at the Alaska Community Foundation, and it raises about 
three million dollars a year now from about 30,000 Alaskans, many of whom are making their very first gift to that organization. In terms of, of the larger initiatives that you have uh, going forward, could you describe some of those and, and talk about uh, what will be important to the foundation over the next three to five years? Our biggest initiative at the moment is around the current situation with the imbalance in Alaska's budget. And this is brand new territory for us. Our state has a $5.2 billion budget and we have a $3.8 billion deficit and right with, now. And with the oil revenues being so heavily impacted, uh, this problem will persist into 2017 and perhaps even into 2018. So this is a very, very serious time in Alaska's financial history. It's a very uh, urgent time in our state. Even if the price of oil went up to $100 a barrel tomorrow, we would still have a fiscal gap. So we can no longer operate with a single source of revenue. And it's time that we have to talk about broad-based taxes, income taxes, sales taxes, corporate taxes, changing the way we use our endowment and it's a difficult conversation. We also have to talk about, is our budget the right size for the 700 and something thousand people that we have here? And most people say, no, it's too big and we're gonna have to reduce it to a sustainable level. But how do you do that? You wanna do it in a thoughtful way and have the minimum impact. If we go back to our mission of Rasmussen Foundation, which is to be a catalyst for a better life for Alaskans, this effort is very much aligned with our values and our roots and our mission. And we look at this as what will it take, what types of decisions do we need to make to ensure a healthy, happy environment for Alaskans. In terms of, of how you see this, this play out over the next uh, years, will the, will the organization need to shift a bit, uh, placing perhaps more emphasis on communication, um, in, in a broader sense, rather than thinking about communication in terms of grant making, but also think about communications in terms of, of this other uh, dialogue, which is, a, which is the full dialogue about how do you keep Alaska strong beyond the idea of, of, of making grants and making okay. strategic investments? We have several uh, initiatives that have been ongoing and a couple of new things. We, on a s subject matter basis, we will not be with this fiscal project forever. This is right. a, a short-term project. But for example, we're working on reducing the harm caused by alcohol in our state. We have devastating impacts in our state of people drinking too much. It's not about teetotaling. It's not about um, telling people what they should or shouldn't do. But when people drink too much, they do stupid things. And the results are we have the highest rate of children in state custody, domestic violence, um, homicides of domestic partners and so on. So you have a, a series of initiatives that are about keeping Alaska strong for the next several years. You have some long-standing initiatives that are, are, are about um, a balance between short-term response, uh, large strategic investments, and uh, small capital projects. And then you also have these, uh, these investments in, in great social movements. Um, this is just a, a, an amazing series of approaches, very textured, very specific, and as you said, very personal. Diane Kaplan, thank you so much for sharing your experience with us of the Rasmussen Foundation, and thank you so much for your insight. You're welcome. Thank you, Mark.